Oh, by the way, <clears throat> there was the other one. <laughs> I forgot to show you that one. <laughs> Is there death after life? Don't blame God. I wanted to make sure I got those in. All right, back to you, Don. Oh, your microphone's muted. He's typing in the link, so if anybody wants to jump in and say hi, they can. Oh, okay. It's not that I can read his mind. I can just see the reflection of the keyboard in his glasses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> I just put up uh, the link over on Facebook on the TLTF group. I'm going to put it in a couple other places. But for right now, let's close out with a word of prayer. Mike, you want to lead us in a closing prayer? Yes, absolutely. Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, we just humbly come before you in amazement of how you just so perfectly have laid out your word for us in this day and time and how you just gently work with each one of us to show us the truth of your wondrous glory in the face of your beloved son Jesus Christ we thank you for the presentation that Alan gave us and may he be blessed and abound beyond his measure just for holding forth the word to your people in such a gracious form I thank you for both Don's, myself, my wife Dana and of course Chandra and everybody else that will see this, just work within their hearts mightily to show them the truth that the of the glory that you have presented in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And since, since the music is now playing, we'll all just wave goodbye. <laughs> and hope you come back and join us for the um, green room. So everybody wave. See you next week. Okay, that's good enough. All right, let me put a little link up in one, one or two more spots. Talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. <laughs> uh, and you probably already know this, Alan, but it's, it's come up twice now in your teaching because you've gone to Genesis. Two things that I noticed, and, and, not, and just to add on to something in... You might add it in your notes for your teaching. Uh, not everything in Genesis 1 is good. The dividings of the waters from the waters in uh, the second day was never said to be good. He did it because he had to. It's very significant with the limitations he put on the spiritual principalities, powers, mights, and dominions. And also, uh, in the record of... Uh, uh, this is uh, Satan did the same thing that he did in Genesis with Jesus Christ. God never said that this is my son. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And Satan left out beloved and said, if you be the son. And so he, he deleted a word just like he did with Eve. And exact. there's nothing new with that old buzzard. But just those two things to add on that I had in my notes. But it was a beautiful teaching. Thank you. You're muted. Sorry about that. The beloved mute button. I'm glad somebody's watching because I, I knew I would miss it. You know? And, you know, that's the way you learn, though, so, you know. When I... I missed a little bit what you said about the dividing of the waters and the waters. Uh, but, um, I'm good. It was never, that was the one day, the second day was not said as being, God said it, God did it, but it's never, it doesn't say, and it was good. He saw, it doesn't say he saw it and it was good. And that's very significant in the reformation process that took place uh, when he made this time period because uh, there was there's there was a divide uh, in the book of Revelation one of the first thing that comes up at the end of the book 
is there is no more sea. And a lot of commentaries like to make that sound like we ain't got water, which that would really suck. But it has to do with that dividing of the waters that he did in Genesis in order to contain specifically the serpent in the sea, uh, in order to limit his authority and power on this magnificent earth that he was uh, re re reproducing or re-equipping. Renovating. Yeah. But he also yeah. limited himself. That's why man was given dominion, because freedom of will and all that stuff plays a part in that. But yeah. that's... Um, yeah, it says, in verse, it says in verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good. Verse 2. And God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5. And God called the light day and the darkness. He called night and the evening and the morning for the first day. But the only thing he said was good was the light. I find the repeated phrases and the version that you were using was hard for me to find it. Yeah, well, you was looking for Bible for so long. The only reason I pointed that out is because I'm going to bring that up because you were looking for it in uh, verse two. I mean, uh, the second day, and I'm going to I'm going to show yeah. this on my screen share because I really this is really significant in this. Yeah. I uh, see it now. I see it now. I know it, I was reading the first day, but the second day, nothing was good on the second day. That's right. That's exactly right, Don. Can you guys see that? Very cool. I never saw that before. Yeah. And and again, I'll be right back. Yeah. God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. God saw the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And it was evening, and the morning was the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate the waters from the waters. So God made the vault and separated the waters from under, which the waters were over. And God called the vault sky. And there was evening and morning the second day. Nothing good on the second day. Every other day, 1 through 7 is said to be good. And that's, uh, that, that this second day was very necessary because of what happened between Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2. <laughs> God had to put some laws and order in things in order to still accomplish his purpose. Um, that's what I was studying this week in the light of the hope. Because God says that uh, his purpose was Jesus Christ from before the foundations of the world. So <clears throat> if that's true then even in Genesis 1-1, God foresaw this man, this, this, this being that he was going to make, and this being that was going to be very unique in his creation and the fact that he came to him and did his will perfectly. Uh, and, but things got mussed up all along the path, and God had to work with what happened because of this darn freedom of will thing. I'll be darned if I'd have done it. <laughs> Cool stuff. Good teaching. Oh yeah. Yeah. One of the things you were talking about is, you know, uh, how come this stuff is all all covered? You know, why isn't anybody seeing this? And I think it's really because most of Christianity has its head stuck in the Gospels. And I'm I'm sure that's quite all right with Satan. He'd rather have us in the Gospels because in the Gospels there's there's some stuff that's going to happen. People will get born again. There's not much he can do about that. People will hear about Jesus Christ. But where's the power? It's all of Jesus Christ. If he can keep them in the Gospels, they'll never find out that it's now Christ in you that we have the power, that we've been made ambassadors, that we stand in Christ's stead now upon earth. We represent God to the earth. Because as soon as 
As soon as people start getting that idea, they're going to start studying, and they're going to find out about the manifestations and where we can really kick the rear end of the devil. And that's not what he wants. He he wants to stay in the Gospels. He's Jesus Christ uncovered him. He's covered himself back up, and he's pretty well deceived the entire world. There's just a few of us who are willing to stand up and say, "No, that is the devil." Absolutely. He's got everybody. He's got everybody still believing in the idiom of permission that God's responsible for it all. Excellent point. Sorry. Bob. I'm sorry, I just get angry about this stuff because so much of Christianity is deceived. And it's not because it's not the Word, because it's sitting right there. All you got to do is work it out. Yeah, that's what uh, kind of ties in with what Alan was saying. They're dragging Babylon, basically. Uh, all those... Uh, different, oh, what do you call it? <clears throat> the thing, the different religious things that were grafted into Christianity from uh, pagan Babylon and all that. They just, it's dead weight. Exactly. It was an excellent teaching, Alan. Thank you. Well, thanks, Don. I, I missed part of what you were saying. I had to help Mom get to the stairway. But <laughs> I caught the oh, tail I, end of it. You know, I was just saying that you asked about why is it, why don't people understand this? It's because most of Christianity has its head stuck in the Gospels. As long as they keep them, as long as the adversary can keep them in the Gospels, he will have, he'll have some victories along the way. He knows he's doomed, but, you know, and people are going to get born again, and there's nothing he can do about it. But he can keep us from reaching our potential as sons of God. He can keep us from knowing, if he can keep us from knowing, it's Christ in us. That that whole same spirit that he got, we got. And that we can go out there and do the exact same things he was doing. And it kind of really gets me pissed off that most of Christianity has its head up its butt. I was talking with uh, John Touchstone this week, and one of the things we were talking about was the risen Christ is not in the Gospels. The risen Christ is talked about in the epistles. And that's where we want to be in, the epistles, not in the Gospels. Yep, and if the devil can't... The Gospels, if he can't keep you in the uh, Gospels, he'll take you straight to the book of Revelation. <laughs> exactly. And then they're, they're gone. <laughs> right? They're not going to understand the book of Revelation if they don't understand the Gospels and the Old Testament and, and, and even how... Uh, it relates to the day and time we live in now. It's, uh, it's like a, a dog chasing his tail. Exactly. <laughs> they can only just guess at everything. Okay, well, it's getting kind of late. I know Michael and uh, Don both have to work tomorrow. And uh, I still got some stuff I got to do tonight before I go to bed. So awesome. I think I'm going to call an end to it. So thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank Good. you, Alan, for that great teaching. Amen. And Don, you'll be, Don, you'll be on.
on the soapbox next week. Roger that. <laughs> and then somebody's going to be teaching about Pentecost. I'm not quite sure who, but somebody will teach about Pentecost. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> It seems like we've been waiting a little longer than 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's good. That's okay. All right. So good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.